So this will be a walkthrough video of the BYD infotainment system and the driver's display, just what's all available. And we'll start with the 5-inch driver's display here. It's the same as the one on the Atto 3. And the controls for the driver's display are on the right-hand side. Here you have your tire pressure monitoring system which shows the temperature in each wheel as well as the pressure and then you have your average speed your theme can also be changed your driving time acceleration timer and your energy efficiency so it's about 13.5 kilowatt hour for every 100 kilometer right now and i assume this is on the higher side because i've been testing out the car's performance and then your total average so this one is just your past 50 kilometer average and this one is your total average for the entire duration of the car so this 10.3 means it's giving about 10 kilometers for every unit of electricity you can then also see here on the left hand side is how much power or regen is going on this is your regen mode that can be changed between high and standard and then you have your driving gear selector. Now it's in park, but you can change it with this button here into drive and then reverse, but also neutral. And there are three modes in the car that will be shown here, eco, normal, and sport. On the right hand side is your energy estimation how much battery percent you have left and this is how much how far it can go your trip your trip meter is down here and this is how your odometer your headlights are here your positioning right now i have them on and now it's off and because the car has so many sensors the speed limit is displayed on the driver's display it must have sensed a 20 km per hour sign somewhere on the ring road though this changes to 50 your ADAS settings that are in display here are all changeable via this toggle now moving on to the 12.8 inch center console the infotainment main infotainment on the system can be changed between a vertical and or a horizontal landscape so you have your navigation a music system dedicated for your car that can go between your radio your music can play video or audio through bluetooth or sd card or usb again going back to the home page and then you have a radio here as for the AC controls, they are down here. You have your span speed. You have whether you want your air to be circulated. This will open up the actual AC menu about your heaters and your AC settings, or you could just leave it on auto. And then while this does look like dual zone auto, it's just a reflection on each side. It makes it easier for your passenger to also change the AC settings if needed. As for AC settings here, we'll go through this later. Coming back to the home screen, you can swipe. Your assistant is there, your phone, your radio, again, just things we've just went through. If you press this button, it also shows you your 360 camera view, your front view, your rear view, your left side view, your right side view, your front lower view, your side views on each side. And then there is a 3D rendering of your car. This is where I'm parked at the moment. It's pretty cool. Again, back to the home screen. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which we'll look at in a quick bit. Then you have a user manual. You have a variety theme where you can select different themes on your car, as well as different wallpapers on your car. Let's go for this. <laughs> Why not? Let's test it out. On the center, console there's also a quick indication of your bluetooth connectivity and your inclination on the car so that's pretty cool if you ask me 
You can also turn it off into a wallpaper where it's just your display. Then this is also your rotation button. Let's maybe we should not have done that. <laughs> you have smart charging here. Basically when to charge, how to charge in case there are different rates for electricity. And you have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So I just connected my Apple device. Now I can it's a wired connection down there. I can put this away. It does not work in a vertical rotation, just a horizontal. And all the basics are there. You have your phone, you have your messages. It's not laggy at all. Spotify seems to work too. Calendar shows up. Let's see how laggy or quick responsive this is. Your Google Maps works pretty fine. And then your Spotify. So you have your Spotify. Recently played, search, library, they all just work just fine. Let's do a quick sound system check because there are four speakers in the car and two tweeters on the car. Yeah, pretty good bases, good mids. And the best part was that the car didn't really reverberate or shake too much even with high bass on it. Again, back to the Apple CarPlay Home. To get back to your home screen, a swipe up. And the home button is here. Now we can check out the settings. Let us go into a vertical mode just to make it easier to look at. And we can start from system settings. So it looks like you can connect your Wi-Fi. These are probably for over there updates. It's also a personal hotspot, Bluetooth connectivities. Go into audio, you have a hi-fi room, live stage. Loudness can be on and off. You do have an equalizer that you can adjust according to your requirement. And sound field settings is just where you want the sound to be centered around. I will keep it at the center. Your media volume, your phone volume, voice volume, and guidance can all be changed. It's for display settings. The brightness of the screen can be adjusted. You have different screen savers to toggle through multimedia, brightness, linkage too. Depending on what sort of music is being played, your theme can be shifted between dark, light, and auto. Your dash, vehicle dashboard brightness regulation can change. So this is for your driver's console menu basic display basically. The change. I'll keep it on brightest for now. You have software. So basically your vehicle software or a software setting, factory resets, all can be done here. Apps, installed apps. Don't think there are too many apps installed, but... This is an Android tablet installed into most BYDs, by the way. We do have 128 GB where 50 is left. You can probably clear the cache. That still gives 128 GB left of free space. That's pretty cool. Your security details, permissions, accessibilities. Again, it's mainly an Android tablet, so you'll have most of these settings. Automatic time syncing, basically time format, your language settings, unit, kilometer, kilowatt, PSI. And that's the one thing we're more used to, at least I am. Uh, memory playback, open source declaration, you don't need to look into that. And then you move on to your ADAS settings because this car has a whole host of ADAS features that I had mentioned on my full review of this car you have intelligent driving cruise control you can keep it on and off driving assist so you have lane support assist you can 
lane depart assist. These are all bings and bongs that'll hear while you drive the car. You can turn them on or off. I will turn them off because Nepal driving is a bit chaotic. Traffic sign recognition, which is basically where your car will read traffic signs and then give you an alert every time you exceed the speed limit. I'll leave this on. And then you have a high beam assist, basically, about as the graph shows to make sure automatic headlights are on high and low depending on incoming vehicles active safety wise predictive collision warning i'll keep that off automatic emergency braking i'll keep that off too because this is nepal's driving and it's quite chaotic blind spot assist you have a whole menu of things door opening so this is a warning when you open your door if there's anything behind you a blind spot detection which you need rear collision warning when you're backing out rear cross traffic alert when you're backing out rear cross traffic braking so it'll break for you if you don't break on time when backing out esc stability control basically on and off and then parking assistance you have your parking sensors which can be turned on and off and your panoramic images basically something that i'd already shown you moving on to the new energy tab this is your regenerative braking which also can be changed via this button here and your range display can either be in dynamic or in a standard mode charging settings smart charging that you could access earlier basically setting up a time zone for charging if you want your charging to be done between 11 pm to 5 am it'll do that charging port anti-theft lock can enable it or disable it leaving it on is okay consumption is here your total mileage cumulative consumption remember on the center console you saw a average as well as a specific last 50 kilometer thing that's displayed here your driving time and average speed is here consumption graphs again i've been testing the car lately so all these spikes represent me trying to floor the car and seeing how the performance of this vehicle is for vehicle settings steering can be either in a comfort mode or a more receptive sport mode brake also in a comfort mode or a sports mode comfort parking lights this is your angle of your lights this is a higher angle and a lower i'll keep it in low daytime running lights can be turned on and off which that is pretty cool because most cars you can't follow me home lights basically your lights being left on for a while after you get off of the car and lights before entering to and an intelligent welcome light on the side of the mirrors i never noticed that external mirrors auto fold on and off when you lock and unlock your car ac your fan speed can be reduced during calls there's also air circulation air remotely controlled air condition running time so 10-15 minutes before the car starts, auto AC mode can be either in economical or comfort mode. Door and windows, press and hold to open doors, press and hold to lock windows and close windows, press and hold to unlock and open windows, auto lock while driving. As for notifications, you get reminders, sound source, standard or brand, engine sound limiter. Basically the engine sound fake engine sound <laughs> speed warning let's put the speed warning at i know i'm gonna hate this but 60. <laughs> and then finally you have a health tab here your service intervals 90 days or 3500 kilometers which can be changed 120 days that's about four months an overhaul your wipers can be put in service position in case you need to take it out you have a user manual and you have vehicle information your status is good that's that's a quick setting all right let's go back to the home screen oh and you do have a multi display tab here in case you have other things you want to be using that's pretty cool so this was a in-depth display 
walk around of both your infotainment screen as well as your driver's display. If there are any other questions or comments, just drop a comment below and I'll see you on the next video.